Uh, this panel discussion is on collaboration strategies, align your sales and marketing teams to deliver unparalleled value. And we have with us today, Kobe Ben Mier, Chief Marketing Officer and Principal at Yes Lender, and Tara Quell, Product Marketing Director at Demandbase. Uh, and I'll be moderating today, so I have a set of questions that we'll get into in a little bit. Um, Kobe, you were with us this morning, um, so some people may have seen you, but I'll ask if we just do maybe a little introductions, a little bit about your, your backgrounds and uh, your organizations, and then we can get into some questions. Yeah, sure. I'm the CMO and principal of a company called Yes Lender. Uh, we provide small business financing to small businesses in amounts between five to 250K usually. Um, we're focusing a lot on improving the customer experience for the business owner and making capital more accessible in the small business alternative financing world. And Tara, if you'd like to introduce yourself and say a little about where you're from. Sure. Hi everyone, um, Tara Quell. I spent eight years at Fidelity Investments, um, both on the personal investing side and then flipped over to the workplace investing side um, and then joined Demandbase about a month ago. And I am standing up our first industry vertical, um, focusing obviously on financial services and helping the team to grow and support our customers there. Um, again, demand-based, account-based marketing platform, have a number of um, clouds and services that we support. So happy to be here and excited to talk about all things account-based marketing, financial services. Awesome. Happy to have you. So yeah, we have a set of questions and some of them are actually tailored more towards um, each year sort of background. I'll start with Kobe. Um, how do you encourage conversation and feedback between the sales and the marketing teams? You know, it can be Think about heads sometimes. Uh, how do you facilitate yeah. day to day and throughout the year? That's like that's the the main question, right? How do you uh, make them work together? <laughs> You know, marketing wants to do one thing and sales always says it's marketing and they blame each other. But the, the challenge is to, to get them to communicate. Uh, and uh, it's not even them, it's to get us to communicate because you can't have sales without marketing and marketing doesn't work without sales. Um, and I saw many uh, uh, occasions that you get a lot of uh, marketing results. You get a lot of clicks or a lot of leads or a lot of calls uh, and it just doesn't work. And if you don't get the right feedback from the sales uh, department or from the salesperson, whatever the structure is in your company, it's really hard to for marketing to optimize or to try and, and filter the results uh, and the target a bit more. And I found that it works great to, to get people to communicate with each other between the teams if you have a mutual goal. And usually the mutual goal with sales is to generate as much commission as they can or whatever the, the base that they're working on uh, and to close as many accounts as they can. And for marketing as well, to generate as many results as possible uh, for the entire funnel and not just for the uh, first interaction point. So once you have a mutual goal and everybody agrees that it's, it's their mutual goal to optimize, to get to better results and marketing understands that if sales are happy, then they're happy and we get better optimization feedback across the board, that usually is the starting point that gets people to interact with each other. And I'll give an example. Uh, let's say you have a campaign. We had a campaign uh, um, uh, with a previous campaign that I did that generated a lot of leads. Uh, and we had five salespeople sitting on, uh, in the room next door and about 1,500 leads a month. Um, and marketing had to go one by one every week for a period of time, a few weeks, uh, to ask them for feedback. And even though in most of the cases, they felt like, hey, we don't have anything new to give you, we insisted of, ha of the salespeople giving us some feedback, even if it's just half a word, half a sentence, something, just to get them used to communicate about how was the quality of the leads? How was the quality of the calls? What do you think personally, not as a team, personally, we can improve to make you do better. And once you go into this mindset as, as a marketer, once I go into the mindset of how do I help sales do better in what they do, then I help myself do better with the objectives as a company and not just as a marketer. And the bottom line is if you encourage and, and persistent enough 
to get people to give you the responses that you require or you ask them to, and you just keep following up and you and you make a habit out of it, you end up getting better responses than just scheduling a, a monthly call with, with sales, asking them questions, and they don't remember what happened in the last four weeks. If it's ongoing, then you do better on the long run. Yeah, yeah, makes total sense. Uh, yeah, Kelly, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can chime in, but I would just add to, um, I love what Kobe was saying about a shared mutual goal, right? Especially when folks are, you know, for the most part virtual and you're at home, you know, you it, it can sometimes be a little bit more challenging to make those connections and talk about those shared goals. Um, sometimes in financial services, folks, you know, try to cut off more than they can bite, right? Like it's it's too much. And so what I've learned is it's okay to start small too. Like it's okay to just start with like a daily 10 minute stand up if you have somebody from marketing partnering with sales and or if you just have one SDR and trying to understand like what worked last week before they forget it, right? Like what was coming in and where were you able to like move the needle along? Um, so I found like a daily stand up can sometimes work well. Also like talking about problems, like is it poor data? Is it the content? Is it the lead flow? Where can you know marketing come in and help sales and where can sales help marketing so that they create this you know mutual relationship and they're both working towards the same goals. Um, the last thing I would just add is like celebrate the wins, like be a you know a group in a team everybody loves to be part of a team especially a team that's winning right but it's okay that things may not work at first and it may be really hard to like build that alignment and get that you know partnership going but if you don't talk about what's not working then you're not ever going to get towards the successes right um so i love kind of like you know having like the fun failures and celebrating a failure and it's, it's okay to like you know, stumble along the way and try new things to get to the bigger wins. And at the end of the day, if everyone's winning together, like the company is winning, sales is winning, they're getting their commission, marketing's feeling good about themselves, and, you know, it makes for a great team. So just a couple points that I'd like to add. I love your points. And I'll just add that some of the best marketing mini campaigns, not, not the main campaigns, uh, come from sales ideas. They, they tell you, hey, why don't we try that? I see this is working mm -hmm. really good. And another point I'll add um, uh, following you is that don't be too fast to blame each other. Don't be too fast to blame, you know, it's sales fault or it's marketing fault or targeting fault. So just work together to uh, or try to work together to celebrate all the wins and fails. I, I love that. Celebrate the fails. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. No, ex excellent points. And um, one of the questions we had that sort of uh, stems from some of the things you talked about. I heard the word, um, you know, it was a commission or incentive um, and then getting them aligned. So how do you empower team members to take ownership and initiative while they may have different compensation structures, you know, sales versus marketing? Especially if the incentives are different, you, you may have a, a recipe for disaster potentially there. So how do you kind of manage through that process? Well, I think sales, I think in most companies, they have like a mixed, structure compensation and and marketing I, I didn't see a lot of marketing uh professionals that do commission you might have bonuses or something but you you have a, a larger compensation package because you're not in a sales position um and that should be the base of the conversation there you shouldn't talk about the compensation but i think i actually look at uh, and and i hope that you know my team always looks at it the same way that the fact that sales work mostly on commission should drive us as marketers to push harder to get better results and to and to get sales to work with us because the more they do the better we can do with our campaigns and our objectives and our uh, a strategy that we apply to the market because it doesn't help us if we put out a campaign and it looks amazing and the aesthetics is great and the content is, is you know has been worked on for, for months but you end up getting either bad quality leads or you don't get any results. Um, and, and sales is an integral part of that. If, if you end up having the salespeople just following up once instead of seven times with a lead that comes in because they're like, you know, I don't care about how many leads come in anyway. It's, all of it doesn't, doesn't really matter because the quality is not good. Then you lose 
the end result that you're trying to achieve. And I think empowerment is, is a really important word here because if you get each individual team member, both on the sales and the marketing teams, feel that what they do makes a difference and they're empowered enough to take initiative and you know go to each other and find creative ways to do better and to optimize better and to put out new campaigns and to put new objectives on the table from both ends, uh, you'll be in a place that you see the optimization happens on itself and you don't need to uh, walk through every little step with both team members um, to get to that point. So empowerment in, in business in general, I, I think it's a crucial part of, of what we should all do. We should all encourage that. We should all encourage our employees to do better and to challenge us and not just to tell what, you know, what the objective is and go and execute. Uh, empowered team is always performing better than non-empowered team. So, and, and that's very much true for sales and marketing as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tara, how, how do you think about kind of getting sales onboarded? You know, is it as it comes from marketing into, into sales, um, especially on the product side, like how, how do you, what are your thoughts on that for a successful onboarding? Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's a tricky one too, right? So I, you know, what Kobe was mentioning about empowerment, a lot of this comes back to just like the fundamentals of how humans work, right? So there's empowerment and there's trust. Um, I think sales loves nothing more than to see benefits, right? So like, what are the benefits of an approach where marketing and sales are aligned? If there's no benefits and there's no trust built into them, um, you know they're gonna they're gonna stay historically in their silo and marketing is gonna stay historically in their silo um you know so i typically start with a meeting where i'm talking about like the the basics let's let's get back to it um you know you're gonna typically see higher conversion rates you're gonna be working off of a target account list so you have these higher quality leads that are coming in um Sometimes I'll ask sales, you know, some open-ended questions like how, how satisfied are you with your pipeline? What's going on in your funnel? Um, where, are the, where are the struggles that you're seeing? And then talk about, you know, how marketing can help them. It seems so easy sometimes, but if you've never really formed the partnership and you haven't helped them understand how they can be part of the team, um, then they're going to stay over in their swim lane. Um, a lot of times I talk about, you know, better, better close rates um, that with an account based strategy, you're going to be targeting those decision makers, right? Marketing is going to be helping you create this cohesive approach, um, sometimes an omni channel approach if you're further along in your maturity. Um, and with a cohesive approach that, you know, is going to help sales, they're going to have the personalized content. You know, sometimes in financial services, um, you know, we want to get to that one to one personalization, but we've been a little bit further behind. Um, I'd say the pandemic has definitely like flipped that on its head. Right. And that you have to get to this digital approach and helping folks understand, like, you know, how, how can we help you? Um, and then the last thing I would just add is, you know, zero waste like focusing, helping sales understand that like the money and efforts that we're putting towards together are going to be on the accounts that matter. And so you're not going to have any of these, um, you know, hopefully you're going to have, you know, less, less waste. You're going to have um, leads that are like further qualified. They're part of the target account list. They are ones that you want to go after. And ultimately at first, um, I've seen this historically where, you know, the number of leads go down. And so um, the quantity, the quantity is going down. And so sales will sometimes be concerned about that. And, you know, it's just, it's a coaching on marketing side that that's okay. Sometimes the quantity may go down, but actually what you're going to be getting is a higher um, pitch and quality, right? And so hopefully the higher quality is going to turn into more win rates and higher velocity and um, 
you know, I think really just honing in on the benefits for sales is going to, you know, enable some of that trust and help them understand like the what's in it for me. I'll just add and I'll say that I found something that's very effective that if you can add a qualifier or enabler uh, layer before it gets to, to the more successful sales uh, uh, people on your team, they like it. You know, even if you do it on, on, on the automation side, you have leads coming in, you try and qualify them some way or another, and then you pass them on to the sales team. So they see that you're making an effort on top of the optimization that you're doing with the campaign in general, the multi-channel approach that you will take. Uh, it's very effective because they feel appreciated. They feel they don't need to waste their time on the less qualified lead and you're taking a step towards them. Right, and I just add Kelly, like, with a platform and a product like demand base like you are serving up real-time intent for these folks and so you're helping them understand like who is in the market to buy and obviously as someone in sales they're going to be you know more excited about someone who is showing those signals and who is ready to buy um and hopefully that's going to help their pipeline as well yeah definitely definitely um sort of to take that those thoughts uh, a little bit deeper when you look at the the marketing the sales funnel and conversion rates. Um, how do you go about identifying, you know, the key points along that funnel, whether they're bottlenecks, you know, um, or quality, you know, indicators? Um, what are some things that you may look at to kind of help improve that funnel, improve that conversion rate through the funnel? Kobe, do you want to take that to start? Uh, I'll just say that some of the of the biggest pain points are the, the where, you, where they get stuck, right? You, you drive a lot of leads. And I, I think that the main one is the number of follow-ups that sales is doing with, with an incoming prospect. Um, and the reason for, for that bottleneck is that, you know, sometimes it, maybe one person gets too many leads and it's not their fault. You need to optimize uh, um, that process. In most cases is that they just don't have a, a system to follow. They don't, sales needs marketing involvement. You can't ignore that. You know, marketing has to get involved in the in the pipeline of how the leads are being treated because if we don't understand and we, we can't affect what's going on with the leads after they come into the CRM, then any, everything we're doing is, is not important at all. Because if we, we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars every month and we bring a lot of leads and we don't, help optimize the process of the sales team, not the sales people, but the process of how they operate with it, how many leads they get, what's the response time for every lead that comes in, how many times they follow up, what can we do as marketing to automate stuff in sales, like um, automated emails going out, automated text messages for them in specific points, what do we do when they move it between stages of, of the sales cycle of a lead? We can do a lot as a marketing team to help the sales process and not just expect sales to do everything themselves. And the biggest pain points are when we just don't do that, when we don't take a step forward and go into the sales process as well as the marketing process. Yeah, great. Terry, did you have uh, any comments on that? Um. Yeah, so typically when I'm, trying to identify like those key points in my real life. Um, this is a very tactical example, but for folks who like tactics, this may be helpful. Um, I, I will do something almost like a funnel review where we start at the top of the funnel, we work our way down, right? And so I'll bring an analytics partner along for the ride. And whether you're using Adobe or Google Analytics or whatever your analytics source of truth is, looking at things like exit numbers, bounce rates, um, high traffic, low conversion, helping them understand the marketing language and the marketing analytics, but also like why, why might those things be happening and how can we formulate a strategy together? Um, so in the funnel review, I'll go through like each section of the funnel and talk about what our problems are. So for example, like very first, you know, top of funnel, MQL to SQL, typically in that like five to 15% range, are the quality of leads poor? Um, could we be managing the conversations better within that area? From SQL to discovery call, 
Um, what's happening with compensation? Are we having an inconsistent meeting process maybe? And those are things that, you know, marketing may not know, but sales will be able to help inform them of what's actually happening in that process of the funnel. And so, for example, if there's an inconsistent meeting process that may be happening in that, you know, kind of second area, the second tier of SQL to discovery call, you know, could they be, you know, crafting a better agenda or do they even have an agenda at all? Um, are they making sure that the prospect or the customer has, you know, critical next steps and are they, are they the crucial ones to determine to help them move along? Um, and then I know I mentioned the, you know, analytic side of the house and understanding from a marketing perspective, what's happening and how can sales, you know, be part of that team and help them understand like why things may happen. Um, I think kind of doing that funnel review really helps, you know, identify the points um, where you may be struggling. And, you know, sometimes it's, it may be as simple as inconsistent meeting process. And, you know, hopefully that's an easy tweak for folks, but if you've never looked at it and you've never, you know, really gone through the funnel with both parties at the table, um, then sometimes, you know, Marketing may be creating content that's not relevant for sales or, you know, sales may not have the tools they need in their toolkit to be successful. And so, you know, I think at the end of the day, just making sure that, you know, all folks have gone through and they understand what's happening at each stage of the funnel can really be beneficial. I think, I think we're, we're filtering down our, our conclusion here to communication matters. You know, we need to communicate with each other to, to create a more efficient teamwork. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how um, it was said to you know that marketing, the, the communication matters, and that sales and marketing to be on the same page. How early though, you know, as marketers, um, if you're developing a campaign, for example, if you're like a mini case study, you're developing.